Horror is one of the hardest types of games to run as a game master for any tabletop RPG. That's because we can't rely on jump scares or shock value. Instead, horror in tabletop RPGs is about one thing, dread. So in this video, I'm going to teach you how to create dread in your tabletop RPG games. And the first tip comes down to environment, specifically when it comes to horror, a confined environment is best. If your players can escape the horror, it stops being as scary. The feeling of being trapped is a primordial fear. As dungeon masters, we can tap into this fear. Isolated towns, islands, or pocket dimensions even are all great places to have your horror take place. And once you have a confined environment, the second thing that you need is a threat, and specifically a threat that you should probably keep unseen. This is an age-old adage in horror, but the monster that you don't see is often far scarier than the monster you do see. Don't let your players know what the threat is right away. Let their imaginations run wild, because whatever they're imagining is scarier than what the actual monster is going to be. Because the person that knows how to scare you the best is yourself. But alright, this is a basic tip. How do we take this concept of the unseen to another level? Well, firstly, we keep descriptions of the monster vague when possible. As Dungeon Masters, we can be as vague or descriptive as we want. Therefore, we can still maintain that unseen factor by letting the player's imaginations fill in the gaps. Theater of the Mind combat works incredibly well for a horror game. Your players never have to see the threat, they can always imagine it. And one final tip for this premise is that in horror games, a lot of the time, I keep track of my players' hit points. The players not knowing how close to death they are is a great thing. It forces them to hang on your descriptions, and describing a monster biting into their shoulder now is a lot scarier. They don't know if they have 1 hit point left or 20 hit points left. All they're going off is your description. And I think this goes without saying, but if you're using this tip, I heavily discourage fudging dice rolls. Your players have to trust you, else they're not going to really be accepting of you tracking their hit points. So don't fudge. And really, you shouldn't have to, because powerlessness is another aspect of horror that must be considered. Horror and dread comes from not being able to solve a problem. Look at the difference between the original Alien movie and Aliens. The original Alien is a great horror movie, while Aliens is an action movie. And what's the reason? Because in Aliens, the protagonists aren't powerless, they can beat the aliens. The creatures are scary, but it's not a horror movie. The characters baseline should never be able to beat the threat. The characters need to constantly feel like they are out of their depth. It's not about winning in a horror game, it is about surviving. Now at some point you can switch genres and flip to more an action sword and sorcery style adventure. Many horror movies actually do this. Take a classic movie like Jaws. At the start, it is a clear horror movie. But as we board the ship and enter the third act, it becomes an adventure movie. Or maybe more accurately, a monster film. But if you want that horror genre, the characters have to be, in a sense, powerless. They can't have the tools to solve the problem. Or at the very least, they need to be collecting plot coupons to eventually be able to solve the problem. Lots of movies about the supernatural or ghosts do this. You need to learn about the ghost, and then you can eventually figure out how to beat them. And now, taking a hard right turn, we have to figure out how to set up the horror. Or how to set up the horror situation for your players. And to cut right to this point, horror is best when it is a surprise, when it is unexpected and the players don't necessarily know what's coming. Now firstly, I'm a strong proponent of safety tools and checking in with your players to make sure that you are all having a great time in whatever given experience. But you don't have to let the players know exactly what the horror experience is going to be. You can do a general setup by talking about boundaries, guidelines, and veils, but you don't need to dive into exactly what you are going to do. It's even better if you're doing a longer form campaign and you've already gone through this conversation about what is and isn't acceptable at your table, because then you can take a dive into the horror genre without the players even expecting it. When things turn terrifying without notice, that is some of the most intense dread that your players are ever going to feel. 
So don't feel like you need to flag that horror is coming. Instead, let it creep up on the party. Be patient. Build the atmosphere and the mood. And that's something we actually need to talk about because it might be the most important part of running a horror game. Hey everyone, before continuing with the video, I just want to give a shout out to the channel's affiliate and sponsor, Only Crits. Only Crits is an online store that specializes in dice sales and 5e adventure modules. They also carry in stock dice trays and other assorted D&D accessories. I personally love their Spell Scroll dice trays and their duck dice. I mean, look guys, they're ducks in dice. If that's not gonna sell you, I don't know what is. They also have other little small friends, like chickens or pandas. If you're looking for a fun one-shot, I'd recommend The Emperor's End, or if you're looking for a full adventure, I'd recommend The Mountain. Killer. It's a short adventure only running from levels 4 to 6, but it packs a lot of epic adventure and mystery in those short three levels. And it's set up so that you can drag and drop this plot into your homebrew adventures really easily. I've got an affiliate link in the description below, and if you enter the code DUNGEON, you will get a discount on your order. If you want awesome dice, accessories, or adventure modules, check out my friends at Only Crits. And now, back to the video. Atmosphere, tone, they are what make horror, horror. Have you ever tried to watch a scary movie with friends and everyone's cracking jokes and at the end of it you all go, that wasn't scary? Well, yeah, it wasn't scary. The atmosphere was off. You need the right atmosphere in order to create dread. And how do we do that? Well, firstly, music. Music is so important when you're running a horror game because music is such a part of the horror genre. We don't notice music when it's done right in the horror genre, but it sets the tone and gets us into the right headspace to feel that dread. So if you're prepping for a horror game, spend time getting that music perfect. Also, if you're playing in person, dark lighting. Get the space that you're playing in ready for horror. It's harder to create dread in a brightly lit room at noon on a Saturday than it is at 10 o'clock at night, in the dark, with candles surrounding you. Additionally, I would say to limit the use of cell phones and electronic devices. In order to create dread, we need immersion, and it's harder to immerse someone when they have an item that can easily distract them. Now, the real world does happen. People need to check in with family and things come up. So usually what I try to do is have a situation where if you need to use your phone, step away from the table or the gaming area. Because remember, we're trying to preserve that tone. Now, this might not work for every gaming group, but it has done wonders for my own horror experiences. And now I have one last tip for getting that tone and ambience right. And it kind of builds off everything we've talked about so far. Good horror is confined, it's about powerlessness, dread, suspense, and frankly it's harder to craft that experience the more people are there. Humans are naturally social creatures and we feel more safe the larger the group is. That's why if you're running a horror game, a smaller group usually works best. I'm talking two to three players. Obviously you can have more people, but don't feel afraid or discouraged about having horror games and sessions with only a few people there. In fact, some of the most intense horror sessions I've ever run is just one-on-one -on -one between me and another player. Because again, what's scarier than being alone facing a threat that you are powerless against? So that's everything in-game, but how do we do a horror campaign? And I'm gonna lay it all out on the line here. Horror campaigns are so fucking difficult because horror has a shelf life. Because things can only be unseen, unknown, and vague for so long. Eventually, you're going to start to learn the rules of the horror. And then it stops being horror. And it stops being even the slightest bit fun. Because you're just going into a situation that you know you can't win, but yet you still keep surviving, so how much danger is there? That's why horror one-shots work so well. You can keep all that intensity and scare in just one session. It will never get old or stale. Now, a few game systems have found ways around this shelf life problem. Monster of the Week style games work very well, because there's always a new threat. A new flavor of horror every week. But even then, they kind of fizzle out after 15 to 20 sessions. Personally, I like sprinkling in horror throughout long-running campaigns. I pitch these campaigns as like horror slash campaigns. Horror slash adventure, or epic slash horror. The campaign is not fully horror, 
but when horror elements are introduced, it's not a surprise to anybody. And when your players aren't expecting horror each and every week, when the horror does start to creep in, they get scared much faster and much easier. And a game system like Call of Cthulhu gets away with horror adventures because of mystery and the nature of cosmic horror. Mystery helps extend the shelf life of horror because you don't know everything right away. You are peeling back the layers of the horror. And honestly, I found that the two genres work very well together. So if you want to learn how to run a mystery campaign and potentially add some mystery elements into your horror, check out this video right here. And thank you for entering the dungeon.